Hello, hello, all you coloring and art addicts. Thank you for choosing to tune in to Angie's Art Addicts YouTube channel. My name is Angie, and yes, I'm an addict. So I wanted to do a review of this amazing book that was just released last week from Kirby Rosane's. It is his, um, I guess you could call it the best of type book. Um, I first fell in love with him as like my very first adult coloring book, um, I guess favorite um, illustrator or artist. Um, I've had all of his books, these three plus, um, let's see, Geomorphia and Phantomorphia, and I've given those two away to friends um, in the recent past. Um, they weren't really my favorites. I did enjoy some of the pictures. I think Geomorphia had some of the better paper I liked personally, um, including that it was one-sided uh, images. So um, I ended up keeping these three and actually have doubles of a couple of them. I'm going to set them to the side because there's a couple of pictures that are in here that I wanted to compare. Um, so we're going to go ahead and do a review of this book, which I'm sure you've seen a lot online. It is, I believe, the exact same size as all of its others. So yes, it is the same dimensions there. It has a rough, a lot different texture. It's, it's like a coarse type texture on the front and back. Has the steampunk cat that is ever so popular. Actually, this is the only picture in the Phantomorphia book I had that I've ever colored 100% from start to finish and actually thought I did a good job at it. So, um, unfortunately, I don't even have that picture any longer. I might actually contact the person who I sold the book to and see if she still has it. Ask her if she might mail it to me. So, we'll see about that. But anyways, so, we have Color Morphia. This is a plume book. I do believe that this is illustrated, or not illustrated, I'm sorry. No, it's by the same people that did his last ones, I guess. I thought maybe they might have changed publishers, but no, it's still by the plume book. Okay, so... With this book, unlike any of the others, you have the first pages illustrated um, and uh, colored. So, it talks about the high, welcome to my high definition, super detailed doodle world. Um, it goes in and it shows some of the images. I do believe these are colored by um, fans. Let's check this out. Uh, yeah, so it will say like the galactic bear. Um, creating your own backgrounds and shows how this particular... A colorist chose to do like a night background with stars and it kind of goes in on each one of these you know like the dark raven here the galactic bear on the other side um, this image has been colored with great precision using professional high quality colored pencils and it kind of goes into what colors she chose it doesn't tell you step by step what she did but just kind of an overall review of what she did and how she kind of did it very very minimally um, talks about the dark raven tells who it is that did it and um, I think how to find them either on Twitter or Instagram. Um, I'm not familiar with Twitter, so and not very familiar with Instagram. So, anyways, here are the two uh, swans. Um, talks about building a narrative, um, the Egyptian explosion, combining traditional and digital techniques. That's interesting. Oh, it says the background of the image has been completed with digital coloring. If you have access to a digital coloring program such as Photoshop and a scanner to upload a colored image to a computer, the sky is the limit and the effects you can create, or with the effects you can create, I apologize. You also don't have to worry about making mistakes. You just delete them with the click of a button. Here the colorist has laid down dreamlike colors such as magenta, sea greens, periwinkle blues with a soft edge digital coloring brush. She has also added glowing white fantastical details patterns and hieroglyph to the background something that would be very difficult to achieve with traditional methods so it's just saying that all of the background um, stuff there is done you know on Photoshop or a very similar type um, program which are very easy to get for free on any tablet Android phone uh, iPhone you know or tablet um, I'm Yes, you could actually, I've never attempted to do that, but you could scan it in and send it right to your phone or tablet or just take a picture of the blank, you know, coloring page and do that within your coloring program. So this is the jellyfish here. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. And then the flowering skull. And last but not least, the clockwork cat. 
And this talks about working with a minimal uh, palette. You know, they have only chosen, you know, like three or four colors and several versions within those colors or, you know, ranges or hues. Um, so now we get into the coloring section. Now the paper in this is a bit different than the others. Um, let's see here. So if you can tell, it's a little more off-white beige where the Anamorphia um, was the bright white. And then Imagimorphia, let's see here, kind of spread these out. It's a lot more like Imagimorphia, I would say. Hmm. You know, I think maybe Imagimorphia might be a little bit thicker, actually. Let me... It's a real close, but I honestly believe that this might be just a bit heavier. Now let me see the Mythomorphia. Uh, let's see here. It's definitely thicker than Mythomorphia. I would say it's almost identical, if not a little bit lighter, maybe identical, to Imagimorphia. So, um, that's a great thing. So let's go ahead and go through here. We have the Steampunk Cat and the Beatles. I do think that I'm going to take this book and have it spiral bound like I have my other copy of Imagimorphia. Um, I do like it better because, for instance, uh, when I get to that, I will show you. Um, you have, you know, the ability to get inside of the cracks and crevices of the book Let's, I'll find a page that it's like in that book there so here we have the the clock and the uh, anchor and the leopard and the doodles and this is out of Mythomorphia I know I'm not sure which one it's one of those two but this was one of my favorite ones I began to do it um, I do believe Dee Dee Willingham uh, it was one that did this online, and I did the acrylic, you know, the purple and the blue and the brown, and then uh, colored over it with colored pencils, and it was another one I gave up on, but I did enjoy it. <laughs> um, this is, you know, some more. Obviously, they're all out of other books, so. A lot of these have been, or several of these, should I say, have been taken from one-page spreads and turned into two-page spreads or two-page spreads and turned into one-page spreads. So this is what I was going to show you the example of. So um, here is the original out of Imagimorphia. And this is how it would look if I had not had it spiraled. So you can see just, you know, the, the image is in there if you can just open it up. But because of this, you're not able to get that. Now, I don't think there was as much of the uh, butterfly inside of the Imagimorphia, or maybe I cut it off. I'm not sure, but there is quite a bit in there. And even if it did cut it off, it's just so much easier to do than trying to, you know, bend the book and turn it around and, you know, put it in your lap and have that much of your desk taken up. So I'm a huge fan of this. I kind of go on spurts as to what I'm, you know, obsessed with at the moment. So... <laughs> So, um, you know, I'll go from one thing to the other, but I had um, started to play with some watercolors there, but you can see, you know, it's the exact same image, just in a darker version, um, or off-white paper, I'm sorry. Yeah, but this paper is very beautiful, very, very beautiful, very thick. Um, let's see here. We have the bear, and I've seen that one done so many times, very beautifully. I think this one was not a two-page spread, I believe. I might be incorrect. Very possible. Um, let's see here. That's from Geomorphia. And let's see. Dragon. Now, I don't think that was a two-page spread. Let me look real quick. I don't think it was. I've never colored it, so I could be completely wrong. Let me check here. I think it's in this book. No, I don't know right now. Um, is it in the wolf? Is that there? I'm not going to waste your time me searching for it. But anyways, so it's a two-page two spread there. 
Um, Geomorphia again. And see, with the Geomorphia, there was only two or three images that I actually really liked in it. And it did happen to be the elephant, the octopus. And let's see here. This was a two-page spread from another one. I'm so glad they redid that. I don't think they did the Chinese, the other Chinese dragon or whatever that creature is that's in one of these other books. This was a two-page spread before. Now, I heard a lot of criticism or constructive criticism on Phantomorphia. A lot of people were very disappointed and with Geomorphia because the size of the books when they came out, um, as well as a lot of the smaller doodling that he did that wasn't his typical type work and a lot of the sh shadowing and shading. And I really liked that he put one of the um, artist or colorist pages um, in the front of this, for example, like this, I had seen or heard in one person's review that they, you know, liked the idea of that picture, but because of the um, tiny, you know, shading and the bird being black, there was nothing that the person could do with that. And I think this really kind of shows that, you know, even with that being the case, there are things that you can do with it. So, let's see here. And that's from Geomorphia. I remember that. And I began to do this. This was uh, one that I tried to start following with uh, Sammy. Uh, color with Sammy. Didn't get too far. Let's see here. Now these both were double spreads in Anamorphia. Let's go here real quick. I know exactly where these ones are here. So, let's see here. Um... Oh, I guess the well was a double spread. I just found that there. It was a double spread. So here we have the double spread of Anamorphia with the chameleons, I believe. Um, and now it's a one page, which I love this picture, but it is quite a bit to color. Um, and then we have the toucan, which was also a two page spread, I do believe. I wish they would have done the snakes. That would have been a, another one that I really liked. I never did it, but I would... You know, have liked to have been able to. Um, this is another one of the two page spreads there from Anamorphia, and the page is just so much like this paper is so thin, you can hear it. It's a lot thinner in this one. So, if there's pages in here that you guys were wanting to do, you know, water soluble things on, and you deterred from it because of the fact that it was thin paper or you didn't want to use gesso. Um, then this would be the answer to that for sure. Here's the swans that they did in the front. And the robotic uh, elephant there. It's one of my son's favorites. I think this is from Geomorphia as well. Now this one was the cover of Geomorphia, I think. Yeah, and um, they turned this into a two-page spread. It was not in the first book. Uh, this is one carried over again. Now these both were two-page spreads. In the previous books and now they are excuse me now they are one page spreads so um let's see here i'd actually started i think i was following i want to say zucchini kitty karen um with this i might be off and totally wrong but i did start this at one point with the uh derwent ink tints pencils and so they you know finished this one up or finished this one up i apologize um you know did that over on this book as well and then the fish, I believe, is from Anamorphia. Let's see which one they chose to put in there. I'm not seeing it right offhand. Anyways, they took one of the fish over there. I've seen that one done very beautifully as well. This was from Phantomorphia. That was another one I had heard that... I think this one's a little bit different, but I had heard that people were kind of disappointed at some of the shadowing. This one does not look exactly the, how I remember it. I might be incorrect, but I think the old one in Phantomorphia had a, quite a bit more shading and stuff in the picture, but this was a double page spread as well. Now it's a one page, which I think is better. There's the fox, and it was a double page spread. This continued to be a double page spread as well. That's one I'm glad they redid in this book as a double page spread. And the, I want to say Jaguar. I hope I'm not incorrect. So, as you can see, these are the other books. Anamorphia here. Imagimorphia. Methamorphia. And then Phantomorphia is the thinner one. And Geomorphia um, is kind of thinner too. So, these are both um, quite a bit thinner than these bigger books. 
and um, yeah so that would be the end of this review here <clears throat> excuse me um, I really think that this is probably definitely highlighting his best work um, although there's others in those other books that are amazing I personally am going to be having this spiraled like some of my other books and I did hear a little rumor on the internet that there is another book coming out with all brand new stuff in it towards the middle or end of the year I don't know if that's correct I haven't done my research so hopefully there is I did hear though that um, either I think Geomorphia was his last book before this I from what I read I do believe that he had stated at one point that Geomorphia was going to be his last coloring book that he was going to do but apparently that's not true so you know how artists and people will say this is my last tour this is my last concert and then they end up doing a bunch more <laughs> anyways this is Angie with Angie's Art Addicts YouTube channel thank you so much for choosing to stop by have a blessed and wonderful day